Hi, this is Dan Gilmartin with the Gilmartin Group Real Estate Company in Burlingame, California with your 2015 Hillsboro Review. So, we've got a lot of information on the board here and also you may have received our mailer that kind of goes into this, uh, the certain indicators that we're following on a daily basis. We're always following, you know, how many closed transactions, list price to sales price ratio, you know, average size of the home, average price per square foot and average sales price. So. Last year, in 2014, there was a total of 150 sales. Uh, in 2015, there was 122. So we sold less homes in uh, 2015, but a lot of good news coming. Uh, the average list price to sales price ratio in 2014 was 94%, so nine, they got 94% of the list price. And in uh, 2015, 99% of the list price was achieved through the sale. Uh, days on market, very important number to watch how the tempo is of the market. In 2014, the average days on market was 70. That's a high number. And in, in 2015, we had 54. So that was down 29% from 2014. That is a positive number, meaning much more of a seller's market and the pace of the market certainly sped up. Uh, last, uh, in 2014, the average size home was 4,643, whereas in uh, 2015, a smaller home uh, was 4,447 square feet. Now this, is, this number here is all of Hillsboro. Uh, the average price per square foot of all of Hillsboro in 2014 was $810. And in uh, 2015, it was 996, so that's 23% from 2014. That's fantastic. Uh, average sales price in 2014 was $3,762,000 and in uh, 2015 was 4428314 up 17.7% from uh, 2014. Now, what I like to do is, you know, we can slice and dice Hillsboro in many ways, as you know. Uh, we have North Hillsboro, South Hillsboro, Lower Hillsboro, Upper Hillsboro. I like to just do it for this review, Upper Hillsboro and Lower Hillsboro. So for Upper Hillsboro, uh, the average uh, home that sold was 4,265 square feet in 2014. In 2015, uh, 4,181. So just a you know, slightly smaller home sold in 2015. The average price per square foot, $841 in Upper Hillsboro, whereas in 2015, 928. Huge jump there. Uh, also, the average sales price in Upper Hillsboro for 2014 was $3,395,644. And in 2015, a big jump, $3,789,286. Now, Lower Hillsboro. Average size home that sold in 2014 in Lower Hillsboro was 5,164 and in 2015 was 4,465. Again, a smaller home. Um, we actually, we had a, there was one particular sale in Hillsboro uh, in 2014 that probably skewed that number. It was a, a very large home. We, we may all recall what home that was. Uh, the average price per square foot, $931.87 in Lower Hillsboro for 2014, 2015. That number jumps, 1,062, huge. Uh, average price, uh, sales price in 2014, $4,296,288,000. 2015, huge jump, $4,903,020. That's a massive jump. Some other very interesting information that we have in the mailer is a month by month days on market view, uh, average, or no, not average, actual inventory month by month, and the average sales price to list price ratio. And so it kind of helps you think about when is the best time to sell your home when you look at the year. And it's very interesting. So in January of 2015, there were only four homes for sale in all of Hillsboro. And, and if you look at our graph here, we have one of the highest sales price to list price ratios was in, was in January. Now in July, was the high water mark of inventory in Hillsborough. We had 21 homes for sale in July, and that was very close to the lowest sales price to list price ratio. And then back up through the end of the year, we have October, where we inventory dropped to nine homes on the market, uh, new homes came on the market in October. And again, we jumped up to one of the highest sales price to list price ratios. So where do we go from here in terms of, are you thinking of selling your home? You know, you might have a lot of questions. One of the main questions people are asking is, is the taxes, you know, a lot of us have made a lot of money on our home. So are the taxes that you're going to have to pay when you sell your home stopping you from thinking or stopping you from selling your home? And we're going to have, invite Tim Gilmartin right in right now to go over that. Good afternoon. I'm Tim Gilmartin, president of the Gilmartin Group Real Estate Company here in Burlingame. Also adjunct professor at the College of San Mateo, teaching real estate economics, real estate finance, and commercial investment property analysis. And I'm here today to talk about are taxes stopping you from selling your home? And why did this topic even come up? Well, let me tell you, people ask me every day, Tim, how come so few homes are for sale? 
And I believe this is one of the reasons that so few homes are for sale right now. People in our area who own a home and have owned a home for a long time have made a large profit. Congratulations. The problem with that is it creates a large tax. And you know what? Most of us have an aversion to paying tax. I get it. The question is, are we avoiding paying taxes, which may in the end cost us more money? And so I got up to this topic, and it has a lot to do, by the way, with where we are in the cycle. If the cycle can con continues to go up for the next 10 years, never down, well then, what the heck, keep putting it off and taxes will be fine. But if the cycle changes, the taxes being the reason not to sell could be a problem or could be an issue that costs you more money, not less. So behind me I have a board of numbers and there are some big numbers because this really relates to Hillsboro because it was part of a conversation I had with somebody about homes in Hillsboro. And you'll see here, for instance, this talks about the actual market in Hillsboro from the year 2000 to, to the end of last year. For instance, in the year 2000, the average home sold in Hillsboro for $2,500,000. You know, then we had the dot-com boom and then bust. And after that, the price went down. As a matter of fact, it went down to about $1,750,000 before it popped up to today's value, $4,500,000. So if you bought in 2000, you rode the market all the way, you're now at this new peak, $4,500,000. Congratulations, you've made a $2 million profit. By the way, these are all round numbers, and I'm gonna give some tax information, but I am not an accountant, and everybody's tax situation is different, so you should talk to your accountant about these numbers specifically to see how they relate to you. But on average, this is fairly close. If you paid 2,500,000 in 2000, and you sell for 4,500,000 today, and you make a $2 million profit, and you're married, you have a $500,000 tax exemption from that profit, you have a taxable gain. Your taxable gain is $1,500,000. So if you're married, you get a $500,000 exemption. If you're not, you get $250,000. And if so, if your exemption was reduced by $250,000, your taxable gain would be increased by $250,000. So I've just written this because this was a married gentleman we were talking to about this. So now you have a taxable gain of $1,500,000. And in our world of taxes today, you have federal capital gains tax, you have the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act tax, also known as the Obamacare Act tax, and then you have the state of California tax, which is you know taxed on everything left over after that. Those numbers, they, they're 20% for federal, 3.68 for affordable care, and then the state income tax up to 13.67. Seems generally when you're making a profit like this that your tax comes out at about 33% of the total profit. So your tax on this sale, your four and a half million dollar sale, your actual tax will be about $500,000. Actually, barely more than 10% of the sale price, which is, you know, sort of interesting when you look at it. But in the end, therefore, your $4.5 million sale price turns into a net after-tax sale price of $4 million. Congratulations, you made a profit, but that is a huge tax to pay. Ouch. What I want to talk about next is what happens if the market changes and you decide to sell later? So now if the market just goes up, up, up forever, then of course, if you wait longer, you're gonna sell for more, your taxes will go up, but you're always gonna have more. But as we all know, the market doesn't just go in one direction. We've seen our market over the years go up, and then down, and then up, and then down. And the good news is that over every 10 year period that I've been able to track, the price has been higher 10 years later. And I'm absolutely certain that 10 years from now, prices will be higher than they are today. The question is, what will happen over the next 10 years? And since we've been going up for the last four and a half years, how close are we to that time when we start to go back down again? So I decided to look at the market and say, what if the market did what it usually does? When it goes down in Hillsborough, it usually goes down by something like 15%. So what happens if your four and a half million dollar home goes down by 15% because you're just part of the market cycle and now you've decided to sell because, well, that's where you are in life. Well, what happens then? Well, now you're not selling for $4,500,000, you're selling for $3,825,000. That's 15% less than $4,500,000. Now, by the way, then you've reduced your profit to $1,375,000. Not a bad deal. Not a, excuse me for looking at my board, but I had to make sure I wrote my numbers down right. Not a bad deal, but not as good as the $2 million profit, right? Then we still have our $500,000 married exemption. Now, once again, remember, if you're single, only 250,000, but you get 500,000 as a married person, now you have a taxable gain of 875,000. Well, of course, you're gonna pay way less tax on 875,000 than you are on a million five. If I use the same ratio of 33%, which I still believe will hold at this number, 
your taxes are going to be less. They're going to be $272,000. That's way less than $500,000. So congratulations, you saved taxes. The problem is, is that obviously at this reduced price, $675,000 in reduced price due to the loss of value shows up at a reduced after tax sale price of $3,552,000. So yeah, I lost $625,000 in value. I actually only lost to my pocket about $450,000. But of course, $450,000 would be better to have than not have, wouldn't it? So obviously, you know, if you're at that spot where you're going to sell now or sometime in the next three or five years, you might wonder, and, and taxes are holding you up, you might think about, well, now might be a peak versus a valley. Maybe we take advantage of a peak. So this is what we're talking about with, do we want to, are we just using taxes as a reason not to sell when in fact, if the market changes, not only will you still pay the taxes, but you'll just be paying them on a lower profit and you'll just make less money. I'd rather have 4 million after tax or 4 million after tax sale price than 3,550 after tax sale price. And I'm certain that you would as well. Thanks for uh, paying attention. If you have any questions, please check in with us on our webpage, uh, www.thegilmartins.com. Have a great day.